guys, B motherfucking C amplified. We got some time on this early Monday morning to talk a little bit about the Go Home Show. Monday Night Raw's Go Home to SummerSlam, the second biggest pay-per-view of WWE's calendar year, and it is tonight. This should be one of the biggest Monday Night Raw's of the year. Your second biggest pay-per-view is this Sunday? Six nights away? Yet, the recent trends leading up to pay-per-views as far as go-home shows are concerned, they look pretty tragic, don't they? So, do we... Do we put a lot into tonight's show? Do we put it on a pedestal? Do we expect a lot from this show? A lot of people would say it's Monday Night Raw, period, so I don't expect a lot anymore, BC. But especially a go-home show, you're supposed to expect your best Raw of the build to such pay-per-view. This pay-per-view happens to be the second biggest pay-per-view of the year, yet WWE has already announced some segments for tonight, and they're not exactly captivating me. So is tonight's Monday Night Raw, the go-home show to SummerSlam, is it going to be epic, or is it going to be nothing short of tragic? I'll get to that in just a couple of minutes. First, I just want to say the morning started out pretty damn good, my Yankees are in second place solely in Major League Baseball. They're looking up at only the pesky Boston Red Sox. If we can just catch them, my Yankees will be the best team in the league. We put the Astros behind us at least a game. So we are solely the second best team in all of Major League Baseball. We just got to capture those fucking Red Sox. So that's good news. Then I find out a video, a series that I put out just last night, late last night too, after 5 o'clock even... Um, and that's a video in a new series that I'm calling Amplified Rants. And I put it up on the channel last night. And the host is a returning 2.0. And come to find out, that video, even though I put it out late last night, is already a couple thousand views plus into its duration. It's receiving a lot of good responses from you guys. You guys are loving it. I don't know if you're loving Amplified Man bringing the series to you guys, if you're just loving the channel, if you're loving the fact that 2.0 has returned, which it looks to be the case. But whatever the case, uh, it's really cool to see that video catapulting and skyrocketing up the charts on the channel. And because of that, you guys made 2.0 so fucking happy and thrilled, he created his own Instagram. Now, 2.0 has never been on social media. He doesn't even know how to work social media, and that's evident by what he did when he created his Instagram. But by the way, yes, he did create an Instagram, 2.0 Amplified. You can check him out. Simple enough, 2.0 Amplified. But I gotta warn you guys, he already made a post, a video, and he's already pissed off because he's got no followers. He doesn't understand how social media works. He thought that he just creates an Instagram, and boom! Followers appear, and people that watch the channel automatically appear on his page. But it doesn't work that way. I tried to explain that to him. He, he doesn't understand that he feels that he created it, people should come. If I build it, they will come, right? But it doesn't work that way. He doesn't understand that. He made a video literally two minutes after he just created his Instagram, talking and pissed off about how he doesn't have any followers yet. So... Just remember, if you do follow 2.0 on Instagram, remember, the video was made literally two minutes after. He doesn't understand the concept. <laughs> it's funny, but just remember, it was created two minutes later. So you're probably going to see some followers after, after this video airs. You're probably going to have people go over there and follow him. So then you're wondering, why doesn't he, what is he talking about? He's got no, it's 2.0 amplified we're talking about. He's a little fucking wiry. If he doesn't get shit split by the, at the fucking moment, you're going to hear about it. So go check him out. Please follow the motherfucker so he doesn't tweak out uh, anymore, right? He's blaming everybody under the sun from Josh Matthews to CM Punk. It's a funny video. You got to go check it out. 2.0 Amplified. Also on Instagram, he created one of those, I think, uh, 2.0 Amplified. Check hit that out as well. I'm sure he's going to be very vocal tonight. On Monday Night Raw. If it's a bad show, you're going to be hearing a lot about fucking 2.0's thoughts tonight. He created a Twitter at 2.0 Amplified and an Instagram, 2.0 Amplified. Check both of them out, please, or else we're never going to hear the end of it. 
So that's all the good news, right? The video's doing great last night. Uh, this morning it's doing even better. 2.0 is now on social media. My Yankees are sole second place, best team in the league. And then we hear some more, some more, some tragic news actually. And I don't know if this is true because this is early Monday morning, guys. But two minutes before I started making this video, uh, I saw some rumors going around that Jim the Anvil Neidhart has passed away from an apparent heart attack. That's obviously Natty Neidhart's father. And one part of the legendary Heart Foundation with Brett the Hitman Hart. I'm hoping this is just a rumor, guys. Because I am not confirming that at all. Right before I made this video, two minutes before, I saw that rumor. But it looked to have been gaining a lot of traction. That's why I started thinking maybe this is not just a rumor. I'm hoping that is all it is. I'm hoping that Jim the Anvil Neidhart is kicking this morning, eating some pancakes, some fucking waffles, some egg omelets, guzzling down some orange juice, some coffees, and he's going to have a great day. Hopefully this is just a rumor. But I did want to pass that along to you guys. By the time this video gets out to you guys, we're probably going to hear if this was confirmed or just a rumor. I'm hoping it's a rumor. But I'm just letting you guys know what I'm hearing before I started making this video. And that was that Jim the Anvil Neidhart has possibly passed away from an apparent heart attack. Uh, obviously, Natty will not be a part of tonight's show if that's the case. I don't want to talk any more about it, guys, because I don't know if that's confirmed or not. And I don't want to add on to a rumor. Hopefully, that is all that it is. Because I don't want to think about that. When you think tag teams, great tag teams, you're talking about the Heart Foundation. You're talking about the Rockers. You're talking about Demolition. You're talking about Legion of Doom. You're not talking about fucking... The tag teams that we see today, man, that just make me nauseous and make me want to put my head through a fucking concrete wall. You know, you can like the Revival all you want, and they can put on this awesome match down in NXT. One of the matches of the year, I felt, just a couple of years ago. But when you start comparing the Revival to the Legion of Doom, or the Revival to the Heart Foundation, I'm gonna fucking squash that immediately. Nowhere in the same fucking league. Big props to the Heart Foundation. And again, hopefully that's a rumor. I don't even want to think about Jim the Anvil Neidhart not being with us today. Don't even want to think about it. Um, so let's move on to the video at hand, alright? Now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to tonight's Monday Night Raw. Now when I say this show has the makings to be tragic and not epic, I'm saying that based on what WWE is already starting to feed us in its promotional work. To get us hyped up for tonight, this is what they're hyping us up with. A contract signing between Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins. A contract signing, as if this is some big universal championship match, or some big heavyweight championship match, or some diesel grudge match. It is an intercontinental championship match between two guys that we have seen in the ring together so many times over the last two months that it makes me nauseous and makes me want to put my head through a concrete wall. It makes me want to jump off a fifth story balcony. It just makes me want to do that. Whether it was multiple one-on-one -on -one matches, Dolph versus Seth Rollins for the IC Championship, which we've seen uh, multiple times throughout the last two months, or tag team matches with Drew McIntyre and Finn Balor in the mix or whoever the fuck, we've seen these two in the ring taking blows at each other every fucking week for the past two months. Now, now to get us excited for this match, it's a contract signing. Well, fuck, we've already seen them fight every fucking week, basically. So what are, what do we, what do we need them face to face to sign a contract in front of the camera, in front of the audience for? Is that supposed to build the, oh wow, man, there's a table between them. We gotta see what happens when they finally punch each other in the face Sunday. Oh wait, we've already seen it time and time again, week after week. What the fuck is that going to do? For a pro wrestling fan like myself, I'm telling you right now, that's a rhetorical question. Nothing. Zero. Nilch. Nada. It will do nothing to interest me. If McIntyre slips through and they both put Seth through a table, if Rollins somehow puts both Dolph and McIntyre through a table, it wouldn't matter. 
It's not going to excite me. If they go through the table and through the, the canvas and the whole ring collapses like a Big Show Mark Henry segment. I don't give a fuck. I don't need a contract signing between these two. I don't even want to see them at SummerSlam. But if you're going to have them build this brawl or build this feud or try to build this story with six days remaining and get somebody like me interested, you better think outside the box. And in this case, the box is the ring. Think outside of the ring. I tell you guys all the time. In order to build good stories and good feuds, you have to get creative and get outside of the ring. Not just put the performers in the ring every week and have them fight each other in some way. Or in some type of match. Not just have a performer go out in the middle of the ring and cut a promo and then the other guy comes down to the ring. No, get outside of the ring. Have something happen up at the rampway. Have something happen backstage. Have, have something happen in the parking lot. Have something happen in the street. I told you guys in just one of the videos last week, we used to see Stone Cold Steve Austin and Booker T fight in a supermarket. We used to see the APA, right? I almost said AOP, man, the authors of pain. I almost said that. APA, the Acolytes Protection Agency, JBL and Ron Simmons. We used to see them fight in bar rooms to build up a feud or a storyline, right? Or people would come to them, they would come to other. We've seen Stone Cold go to the fucking bar room. We've seen the Intercontinental Championship thrown off of a, a fucking a riverbank or a fucking bridge into the river. You guys remember those stories that the Intercontinental Championship was basically trying to swim for survival? Get creative. A contract signing can be cool. Not for a match we've been seeing non-stop for the past two months in one way or the other. Either one-on-one -on -one multiple times or tag teams or Seth versus Drew and Dolph interfere. It, it's just non-stop. And now what? Now we see them all in the ring again, but with a table between them. And they're going to sign a contract as if they've never wrestled before. Don't insult my intelligence, man. Not going to work for me. Something amazingly immaculate and epic would have to happen in this contract signing for me to be on board with this. But that's just one segment that kind of has me like, that's your go-home show plan for your big IC championship match? And I use the, the word big loosely. That's what you have st in store? That's what you have planned? But then on top of that, you see the big women's championship match with Ronda Rousey and Alexa Bliss. And what they're doing for that is the same thing we saw last week. Last week we saw Foxy taking on Natty. And in Foxy's corner was Alexa and, and Natty's corner was Ronda. And I said back, back last week, I said, Ronda Rouser's, Ronda, Ronda Rouser? It's early Monday, guys. I apologize. <laughs> BC botching early on a Monday morning. Ronda Rousey's character does not call for her being a cheerleader. She looks so awkward being a cheerleader in Natty's corner. Don't have her in that role. So what does WWE do six nights before SummerSlam? They have her in the same role for the same person. Ronda will be in the corner cheerleading Natty again tonight as Natty takes on Alexa Bliss this week. And Foxy will be in the corner of Natty. This has already been announced. So now Ronda Rousey is going to be in the corner of Natty once again. And now instead of Foxy, now Natty takes on uh, Alicia Fox. Instead of Natty versus Alicia Fox, you're going to get Natty versus Alexa Bliss. And they're just flipping the roles. They just, they roll reversaled. That's all this is. So anybody okay with this, my question would be, how are you okay with this? It's the same shit we saw last week. You just take out Alicia Fox and you replace her with Alexa. But then Alicia is still going to be on the outside. Alexa is now just on the inside. You're still going to get a smorgasbord ending. Ronda will maybe look badass or maybe Ronda gets her the shit kicked out of her. But it doesn't excite me anymore for their match Sunday because you're putting the four superstars in the same format that you did last week. That's what I try telling you guys. Stop that shit. Every week you're seeing the superstars in the same format. And that's Vince McMahon's easy way out to build a feud. To build a story. The problem with that is it's not actually building a story. And it's sure as hell not building a feud. Because we're seeing the same shit every week. It's redundancy. 
Now that's, on the flip side, we hope to just see Natty tonight because if that rumor that I was talking about earlier about her father, Jim the Anvil Neidhart, passing away, if that is actually true, you're most likely not going to see Natty tonight. So then, I mean, careful what you wish for because you just might get it. Then you're going to see something different tonight between Ronda Rousey and Alexa Bliss. But hopefully that is just a rumor. But if that is just a rumor and Natty is there tonight, that's what to expect, guys. Natty versus Alexa Bliss. And in Natty's corner is going to be Ronda, and in Alexa Bliss's corner will be Alicia Fox. It's the same shit we saw last week with just Alexa and Alicia flipped. I, that doesn't build anything for me. It doesn't excite me. That's not a go-home angle or a go-home segment. It's a bullshit segment. I'm not even done there. They also announced a triple threat tag match. B-Team, Revival, and the Deleters of Worlds. This was a stupid build we saw for a few weeks now that we thought was going to be at the pre-show for SummerSlam. Um, but instead, they already added a pre-show match. And that's going to be Lana and Rusev taking on Zelina Vega and Andrade Almas. So... That's going to be your mixed tag match. I'm looking forward to that. I wouldn't mind seeing that on the actual card. That's a badass kickoff show match. Um, but they're going to leave off this triple threat. That's fine too because I didn't want to see this triple threat match, tag team match at SummerSlam. I sure as hell don't want to see it on Monday Night Raw. What is this going to do for SummerSlam? What is this going to do for my entertainment value tonight? The, the leaders of world and the B team again. Oh wait. Don't worry, BC, it's going to be more exciting because they're inserting The Revival. The Revival has a personality of a walnut and a chestnut. Because you got to be a nut if you think they're going to get over with the main roster. The main roster's audience, I should say. Because the main roster crowd and audience, there's a shitload of casual fans. In NXT, it worked. They were, they were big fishes in a small pond. Now they're small fishes in a big pond. And the casual fans, if you don't have a personality, they're going to look at you like, Get the fuck off my TV, you motherfucker. Get out of the ring. I didn't pay to see you motherfuckers. That's the truth. I don't have a personal vendetta against the Revival. What I'm saying is they're trying to use the same thing that got them over in NXT. And, and I use that loosely because they were never truly over. They had some good matches. But they never were over. But they're trying to use the same gimmick on the main roster. Hello? Is anybody listening to me? I am telling you. I am promising you. The Revival will never get over with the main roster crowd because too many casuals take up and make up the crowd. And they're going to look at the revival. And there's not going to be anything there for them to captivate them. For them to gravitate to. It's just the truth. So now you're adding this, this fucking lack of personality team in the revival. Into this match with a, an angle and storyline and feud we didn't care about anyway. B team and the leaders of the world. And now we have a triple threat. What is it going to be? Our main event? Is that going to be the top of the second hour? The, the, maybe it's the first match? Is that going to excite you for 25 fucking minutes? If it is, awesome. You'll be one of those people that loves the show tonight. Me, I don't need to see the, the leaders of world, the B team, and the revival as one of the main matches on a go-home show to your second biggest pay-per-view of the year. Also, tonight, guys, Sasha Banks and Bailey. I'm not going to call them what 2.0 calls them in, in, in last night's video, right? By the way, I almost pulled that video, guys, but uh, it's fucking, it's 2.0. He's a little fucking out there, but I'm not going to call it that name. I'm just going to call it the fucking, the lousy and lame connection. We'll just call it that, the lousy and lame connection, man. They're going to be looking for retribution against the Riot Squad tonight. They're looking for... What the fuck's her name? Ruby Riot and the Riot Squad. That's their plan tonight. It's already been announced. Sasha Banks and Bailey want revenge on the Riot Squad. Here we go again. And everybody said this was the best thing for Sasha, BC. Don't worry, they're, they're really focusing on Ronda. So to put Sasha on TV, to have Sasha Banks be relevant for the next year, they're going to have her in the tag team. They'll even have her win tag team championships in the future, BC. Don't worry. And I said, don't worry. What the fuck are you talking about? They don't even do their men's tag team division right. You think just by putting a championship tag team title on Sasha, this is going to make her relevant or at least put her on TV? Bullshit. I told you guys that. And it's true. 
They're not even at SummerSlam. Right? What are they going to do? Make a last minute match tonight? Riot Squad versus Sasha and Bailey. Because we've never seen that before. They're, they're going to meet each other again in the ring tonight in some way, in some form. But then, there'll be some schmaz ending. And I wouldn't be surprised if they get added to SummerSlam somehow on the kickoff show. Can't put that on a main fucking card. <laughs> So on the kickoff show, you might get Riot Squad and Sasha and Bailey, But as of right now, they're not even on SummerSlam. And if they do get put on SummerSlam, it'll just be the Riot Squad again. You're, you guys are right, man. This is really making Sasha relevant. PC, have patience. In a couple of months, they'll get tag team title. Oh, that's going to be... <laughs> fuck yeah. I see what they're doing with the B team, the, the leaders of worlds. I see what they're doing with their men's tag division. The women's tag division will be off the charts. Sasha will be fucking on every show. So we got that to look forward to. Sasha and Bailey look for revenge against the Riot Squad. Is that not fucking getting your pulse going? Is your heart not beating faster? Are you not getting pumped? Don't worry. Me neither. That's all that was announced so far. Brock Lesnar, we think, is going to be in the building, but he wasn't even advertised. That goes to show you they got nothing for Brock Lesnar. They were just hoping he shows up tonight, I bet. That's why they didn't want to advertise it. Because what are you going to do? Have him sneak in and do something badass? We haven't seen Brock Lesnar do anything badass in months. Probably over a fucking year. They forgot how to create and make Brock Lesnar look like a badass. And that's a shame because he is a legit, natural badass. Only WWE could fuck up the booking of Brock Lesnar. And they did, of course. But we think he's going to show up tonight. To invade Roman Reigns' yard, right? Does Brock show up and piss in Roman Reigns' yard? We'll see, man. Not literally. This isn't a 2.0 video. But, I mean, like, does he fuck shit up? But as of now, he's not even advertised. They'll probably advertise it in a few hours. If he actually does show up into the city that they're in, <laughs> they might They might be like, by the way, Brock's here tonight. I wouldn't doubt that shit. But nothing is screaming go-home show to their second biggest pay-per-view, guys. If it is for you, that's awesome. Kudos. Honestly, I mean that. As long as you guys are entertained, man. But this is my channel. This is my take on it. Nothing that they have advertised so far for tonight's show is intriguing me. That leads me to believe, I'll repeat exactly what I started this video off with. I will end it with the same thing. This should be an epic show. A go-home show to your second biggest paper of the year should be epic. But don't be surprised if it's absolutely tragic. And if that's the case, tomorrow morning when I do my Raw Review Reaction... Don't be surprised if we are ultimately amplified. Because there is no mulligans. You have to put together something even better than an A-plus show. An A-plus-plus-plus show has to be brought tonight. Anything short, and you're going to hear about it. Amplified Man. Lots of amplified size coffees today. And lots of ass whoopings. I want all you guys to kick Monday's ass. And we will all reconvene tomorrow right here for Raw's review reaction. Hopefully Raw brings it tonight, man. That's what we all want. We all don't. We don't want to bitch and complain. We don't want to be negative. We don't want to call out all the bullshit. We want to sit back and be entertained. We want to be so entertained that we actually come to the edge of our seat. That's what we want tonight. Can they do it? Will they do it? Remains to be seen. Amplified man, we're cashing the fuck. Much love and respect to all you crazy motherfuckers. I'll see you tomorrow. For now, check you later.